everybody, Ben Choi or Space Meat here with build log number nine, I think, in the Athlon build log. So as I said, things are coming quickly and um, I'm trying to keep track of what I'm doing, so I'm keeping things a little more focused. So this particular video is going to be all about the helmet again. So as you see, last time I left off, I told you I was going to harden the inside of XTC3D. Yeah, I picked that just because it's what I had on hand, there's no real I probably could have actually used a thin layer of resin, but I just had that on hand and I wanted to use it. And I didn't need to completely harden it, just enough to make it stiff enough because um, I wanted to be able to resist the heat generated by the resin when I put it in there. Because in my previous experience with my reach aerosols, when I wasn't watching, the heat from uh, the resin when it was setting in the cheesecloth was kind of distorting the helmet and I didn't spot it until after the fact. So this is more preventative. I'm trying to make sure that this thing is, is already ready to hold its shape so you can see. Uh, you can see it's really shiny in here because that's where already I've coated the entire inside of XTC3D and filled in as many of these little grooves as I can. So hopefully when this thing experiences the heavy heat from the resin, it's not going to deform or melt because it's already, you know, got this, this crap holding it together. So we'll see. Uh, let's see. I'm also sticking this chopstick in here basically to hold it like this. Uh, which I'll get to later, but basically I'm trying to keep it in the right position when I, uh, what's it called? When I put in the cheesecloth and stuff and when it sets it this way, it's a little bit wider because it seems to have a natural tendency to try to straighten out. And I'm trying to keep it, you know, keep it this nice curve. See? Still fits so far, but I have to keep pulling it to the side. So anyhow, the first thing I'm going to do is attach cheesecloth to the inside. Uh, I'm using this instead of fiberglass mat. Uh, well, because one, it's cheaper than fiberglass mat, actually. And cheesecloth works just as well when you soak it in resin, it's still nearly as hard. And two, it's actually easier for me to manage because, you know, if you've worked a fiberglass cloth before, when you cut it up, like little itty bitty bits of fiberglass get all over the place. It's a, it's hell. I mean, look at this. This is just a piece of cloth. I cut it. It works much less difficulty and it still gets just as hard when you soak it in resin. So I'm like, I'm just going to use this instead of fiberglass mat. Uh, so we're going to stick it in here, and I got this general spray adhesive, so I'm just going to coat the inside with the adhesive, and I'm going to stick this in there and line it up carefully, so let's do that right now. Uh, I guess before I do that, I'm going to tell you exactly what my plans are, <laughs> so you don't get confused. Um, what I learned is, because when the visor's in here, it basically, the force is outwards going this way. And so I'm going to put an arch, basically, and I'm just doing it on the outside so you can tell. There's going to be an arch like this, you know, so this way when the, when the visor is pushing outwards in this direction, the arch is holding it back. I'm also going to put another uh, arch on the inside in the front, kind of like this, so... Because um, it's also going to add to, to the strength, because like I said, the visor is pushing outwards, so I've got a curve going this way, which is keeping it this way, and a curve going this way, which is, you know, they should act together to keep this thing in shape and press against the force of the visor. So, first things first, I'm going to add a spray in here. So, let's see here. Ooh. Okay. That smells. Okay, hang on. Should have thought about that sooner, right? Okay. Oh. Ooh, okay. So the inside is now aligned with that adhesive. So I'm going to very, very, oh geez, it's like a cloud of glue in here. I'm going to very, very slowly just kind of line it in there. So, let me just get it started. Against the uh, 
the foam. I don't want any bubbles or any gaps or any air because I want it to conform to the helmet so you know so it's nice and strong. So I still need to move this too. The good news about this adhesive is that it's very tacky, but I can also rearrange it right now, which is good for me because you know I really I make tons of mistakes all the time. Okay. That should do it. Okay. So, that, there we go. That's one arch that way. I need to do the front, which, okay, apparently there's already glue in there. Alright, so I can, can just feel for it. Yep. Alright, so I can very much just stick this in there. Again, I'm just trying to get it to conform. So, okay. I just don't want any large pockets or air bubbles. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, there you go. Let me just take this out. Oh. Okay. So, I've got the arches in there. I'm going to let this set for a few minutes and I'm going to come back. But, um, in case you're wondering, I'm using this just basically as a temporary adhesive so the stuff stays basically stuck to the foam. I'm doing this because in the past when I've done this, when I try to put in the, the resin in there, it starts sticking to the, um, to the, I guess the fiberglass or at this point the cheesecloth and it starts moving it out of, out of place and it's kind of really annoying and so basically this is just to keep it in place while I put in the resin so I have the shape I want and it's in the spot I want. So this is just more about keeping it, you know, nice and controlled. And so it's not about having a permanent bond, it's just about keeping it in place while I pour in the resin. So anyhow, I'm going to let the glue just set a little bit and then I'm going to mix up some resin and we're going to paint it in here. So uh, just be back in a moment. All right, everyone, we're back. So it's time to put in fiberglass resin, which I'm sure you guys seen done lots and lots of times before, but I guess for completeness sake, I'll do this now. Let me see here. Oh. I'm sure it fits right. Okay. Alright, let's see. So, we got a cup. I'll get some, what we do, some resin. Yeah, I guess that's an uprising. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's okay. Yeah, that's about right. All right. So this is about a four ounce cup and I filled it, uh, I guess about, yeah, it's three quarters. So let's assume there's about three ounces in here. It's about 10 drops per ounce. So let's just add some. Five, twenty-six, 
26, 27, 28. Okay, maybe I went over. 30, 1, 32, 30, 34, 35. There you go. See, if I have too much, it's just making, it'll make it set faster. It might make the resin brittle. If I have too little, the damn thing won't set. So I'd rather err on the side of too much catalyst than too little. So here we go. Obviously, I only have a few minutes of working time, so I'm just going to pour some in. There we go. I'm going to spread it. Get it soaked into the cheesecloth there. I need to cover as much of the cheesecloth as I can here. I have to do it in the time I've got, so just make sure I get it in. I might not have made enough resin. I, I'm barely covering it, so I may have to make another batch quite soon. But let's work with what I've got. See, I can't really brush it very much, otherwise it will move. Because if I brush it, oops, I have to try to just dab it into the to the cheesecloth here. Oh. Oh, it kind of moved a little. Now, even with all of my fancy pieces, it's still moving a little. Especially in the pan, so if I pour some resin on it, it's not exactly going to move anymore. Answer is a lot. <laughs> All right, so yeah, God, so much resin. Okay, so yeah, let's add some more. A lot more. Hmm. Eh, here we go. You're not supposed to do this. You know, add to the existing container, but I'm like, I don't have too much time. 
Ja. Off later. Hands are so sticky. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. 37, 38, 39, 40. That should be enough. So let's get this mixed up. I've got resin on this table and I don't want to get the resin under my helmet I'm trying to keep it nice and clean here. So keep it clean. Alright, we're gonna add it to the spots that definitely need resin that don't have anything right now. So there we go. Crap, that flowed a little. So let's be careful here. Larger amounts of resin are going to generate larger amounts of heat. So I'm trying to spread it out as much as possible so that this way I don't get an extreme amount of heat and I don't distort everything in here. So we're going to see what we can do here. Trying to take care of all the parts where it's sticking out. Like I said, I don't want to have any large pockets of air. I want this thing to be, you know, as conforming as possible. So, let me see here. You can see there's still nice big pockets over here. It in, I guess, and soak it. Yeah. Okay. So, pretty much, this is a lot here. I'm just trying to basically dab on the resin where it's sticking out. See, there's still spots where it's sticking out a little. I'm working on that right now. Just trying to get the, this perimeter down. So I can't really brush, I just need to 
to basically dab it on as much as I can. In any spots that I see that need some. So I'm trying to do the outer edges right now. So it's nice and clean. I may have to mix up another batch after this, but let's just see what we get from this point. need to press it down really. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's switch over to the other side. Yeah, I'm trying. I can tell my hands are covered in resin. So I'm trying my best not to get it on the damn helmet in the outer part of the helmet so I don't mess it up too much. So let me just Trying to clear, keep, because I know the visor needs to be flush with this, so I need to push this down so that this way it doesn't interfere with the visor when I stick the visor in. best not to make a mess here on the outer edges of the helmet clean up any resin that might be dripping through right now or because I do not want to have to sand this I mean one of the advantages of foam is you don't have to sand so if I don't get fiberglass on the outside I don't have to sand all right let me see here looks like we need to do some more fiberglass since we're still definitely in the working period of this, we might as well keep going. I have to come down here for the towel and clean all of this up later. This is very messy. Black class of dip table was a very bad idea, right? Alright, keep going. Okay, so definitely I can tell this front needs some more work, so let's just hold it up here. Trying my best not to make it drip. Trying not to make a mess here. Okay, this one can see it. I don't 
getting. I'm pushing these pieces back basically to make sure everything is, is flush for the visor. I don't want it to do too much sanding with the Dremel tool to make everything fit. So I'm trying to get it all in the right spot now while it's still, you know, soft and malleable. Oh boy, it's getting hot. Like, it's hot. I can feel the reaction in here. Like every time I stick my hand into the helmet, I'm feeling heat. It's feeling like like a small oven in here. So I have to work fast now because I want to get this done and I need to get the helmet in a decent spot so that this way it does not distort because right now this is probably not the best position to have the helmet in. Yeah, so let's uh, get that done soon. It's a gap form in here. Wow. Yeah, I can feel the heat right through here. So I'm going to hurry up now. Just give me a moment. Sorry, guys. Hot. Very hot. Okay, hang on. Can't get rid of it. As much as I can. So there's a definite problem right here that's coming up. So I'm trying to make sure it stays conformed. So give me a second. Oh, what's that? The whole thing came up. <laughs> Don't want to lose that. Okay, so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of heat. Um, it's kind of weird. It seems to be coming loose. Hang on. Let's lift this whole thing up. Go at the bottom. Get the stick. Okay, so just 
thing is obviously generating a lot of heat. I can feel it right through here. We need to make sure it doesn't distort too much. Oh, shit. There we go. Fortunately, this is a problem. So I'm going to see here. There we go. I'm putting a stick in here, basically. So, to widen it up right here, so it stays in that shape. Uh, let me get another, let me get another stick. <laughs> and that sticks. Okay, here we go. And then this stick, I'm just using to prod it. The pieces in the shape, which don't seem to be in shape. This is a problem. I don't know why. It's not seem to be hardening into the right shape. <laughs> so, this is going to be a problem right here. But we're just going to have to work with it. Okay. There. On the bright side, there's not too much heat distortion. But for some random reason, this hunk is not adhering. I don't know why. That's fine. As long as it stays in the right shape, I can find ways to make this stick. This one's kind of, this is kind of weird right now. That's fine for now. As long as it solidifies and becomes a rigid arch and doesn't expand and, you know, keeps it from expanding too much, then it'll be fine. This one's a problem. There. Oops. I think I'm just going to have to hold a stick against it until it sets, really. Alright, so... There. That's better than nothing, but that's a problem. At least, I'm pushing against it. So, that's it for now. I'm going to let this set, and then we'll come back to it. So, there you go. Okay, hi everyone. So, here's the uh, helmet again. I've, uh, it's already hardened overnight. I also uh, sanded it with my Dremel tool here. Um, in case you're wondering, I use, oops, this is the Dremel tool with my little expansion hose, with the little uh, thing at the end, and the sanding drum. I like using that thing because it gives me more control and allows me to jam it into the little crevices in the helmet. So it's, it's a lot easier to reach into here with this tool, this giant vibrating thing above. So it allows me finer control and better sanding. So as you can see in here, I've already sanded all of the uh, fiberglass here, and it's smooth now because it, there's like still sharp little points that can cut into you, and I also wanted to make sure it was all flush. Also, I went off to the laser cutter this morning, and you can see by these two pieces here, I added a little bit more to the chin, so it adds about an inch this way inwards because I felt it was, um, what's it called? I felt it was not really covering enough, so let me see here. I guess you can't tell, but now it's here. So my chin isn't sticking out so much anymore on this thing. I think it just feels a better fit. Also, it has the, the side effect of strengthening this area, so it's actually... Yeah, see, it's like harder to bend this now. So I'm going to put a little more fiberglass in here. So, uh, what else? While I was working on this, I discovered, because I was sanding, this area seemed a little hollow, so I sanded right into it, and I noticed the fiberglass did not harden the cheesecloth here. So I'm prepping a little extra fiberglass to put into here to seal this off, and a little more into this new area to help harden it. Oh, oops, there's fiberglass on here. Just need to clean it off. So that this way, I think the helmet is basically ready. It's already pretty stiff, so you can see like when I squeeze it, you know, it's not really changing shape. And if I push outwards, yeah, it's staying pretty much there. It's obviously still flexing a little, so I want to reinforce it a little bit more. That's why I'm going to add some fiberglass in here. I'm considering putting another fiberglass arch inside here, but that's definitely going to increase the weight. I'm not sure if I want to do that yet, or maybe down here, because that's where most of the tension is. I'm still unsure if I actually want to do that, because I'm really... I don't want to increase the weight of the helmet too much more, but at the same time, it would also balance the helmet, because the helmet right now has fiberglass here and here, which is making it very front heavy. And you put the visor and the fans in, it's definitely extremely front heavy. However, I mean, uh, we'll see how much it flexes. I'm gonna stick the visor in here later and just see what it does to the helmet. But right now I wanna clean all this off because I don't wanna stick a visor in here and get it all scratched up or dusty. I definitely also need to harden this up because it's obvious it's easily 
deformed, so I'm going to put some fiberglass in here and just fill in some of the crevices and make sure it can't bend a little, so that is what I'm going to do right now. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess at this point you've actually already seen me fiberglass, so I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> I think that pretty much covers this video update. Uh, the helmet is now hardened, mostly, so I'm going to be spackling this thing soon and then plastic dipping it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to cover that in the next video because you've already seen me do that the other parts. This is more of the same. Next video is probably me dyeing the undersuit because that is really coming up, which is probably tomorrow, in fact. <laughs> so, once again, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I know these videos are coming fast, aren't they? So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see what's next in this build, huh?